September 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 31 through 33 of the Old Testament. Those who go down to Egypt for help are as good as dead. Those who rely on war horses and trust in Egypt's many chariots and in their many, many horsemen, but they do not rely on the Holy One of Israel and do not seek help from the Lord. Yet he too is wise and he will bring disaster. He does not retract his decree. He will attack the wicked nation and the nation that helps those who commit sin. The Egyptians were mere humans, not God. Their horses are made of flesh, not spirit. The Lord will strike with his hand. The one who helps will stumble and the one being helped will fall. Together they will perish. Indeed, this is what the Lord says to me. The Lord will be like a growling lion, like a young lion growling over its prey. Though a whole group of shepherds gathers against it, it is not afraid of their shouts or intimidated by their yelling. In the same way, the Lord who commands armies will descend to do battle on Mount Zion and on its hill. Just as birds hover over a nest, so the Lord who commands armies will protect Jerusalem. He will protect and deliver it as he passes over. He will rescue it. You Israelites, return to the one against whom you have so blatantly rebelled. For at that time everyone will get rid of the silver and gold idols your hands sinfully made. Assyria will fall by a sword, but not one human made. A sword not made by humankind will destroy them. They will run away from this sword, and their young men will be forced to do hard labor. They will surrender their stronghold because of fear. Their officers will be afraid of the Lord's battle flag. This is what the Lord says, the one whose fire is in Zion, whose fire pot is in Jerusalem. Look, a king will promote fairness, officials will promote justice. Each of them will be like a shelter from the wind, a refuge from a rainstorm, like streams of water in a dry region, and like the shade of a large cliff in a parched land. Eyes will no longer be blind and ears will be attentive. The mind that acts rashly will possess discernment, and the tongue that stutters will speak with ease and clarity. A fool will no longer be called honorable, a deceiver will no longer be called principled. For a fool speaks disgraceful things, his mind plans out sinful deeds, he commits godless deeds, and says misleading things about the Lord. He gives the hungry nothing to satisfy their appetite, and gives the thirsty nothing to drink. A deceiver's methods are evil. He dreams up evil plans to ruin the poor with lies even when the needy are in the right. An honorable man makes honorable plans. His honorable character gives him security. You complacent women, get up and listen to me. Your carefree daughters, pay attention to what I say. In a year's time, you carefree ones will shake with fear, for the grape harvest will fail, and the fruit harvest will not arrive. Tremble, you complacent ones. Shake with fear, you carefree ones. Strip off your clothes and expose yourselves. Put sackcloth on your waist. Mourn over the field, over the delightful fields and the fruitful vine. Mourn over the land of my people, which is overgrown with thorns and briars, and over all the once happy houses in the city filled with revelry. For the fortress is neglected. The once crowded city is abandoned. Hill and watchtower are permanently uninhabited. Wild donkeys love to go there and flocks graze there. This desolation will continue until new life is poured out on us from heaven. Then the desert will become an orchard and the orchard will be considered a forest. Justice will settle down in the desert and fairness will live in the orchard. Fairness will produce peace and result in lasting security. My people will live in peaceful settlements in secure homes and in safe quiet places. Even if the forest is destroyed and the city is annihilated, you will be blessed. You who plant seed by all the banks of the streams, you who let your ox and donkey graze. The destroyer is as good as dead. You who have not been destroyed, the deceitful one is as good as dead, the one whom others have not deceived. When you are through destroying, you will be destroyed. When you finish deceiving, others will deceive you. Lord, be merciful to us. We wait for you. Give us strength each morning. Deliver us when distress comes. The nations run away when they hear a loud noise. The nations scatter when you spring into action. Your plunder disappears as if locusts were eating it. 
they swarm over it like locusts. The Lord is exalted. Indeed, he lives in heaven. He fills Zion with justice and fairness. He is your constant source of stability. He abundantly provides safety and great wisdom. He gives all this to those who fear him. Look, ambassadors cry out in the streets. Messengers sent to make peace weep bitterly. Highways are empty. There are no travelers. Treaties are broken. Witnesses are despised. Human life is treated with disrespect. The land dries up and withers away. The forest of Lebanon shrivels up and decays. Sharon is like the desert. Bashan and Carmel are parched. Now I will rise up, says the Lord. Now I will exalt myself. Now I will magnify myself. You conceive straw. You give birth to chaff. Your breath is a fire that destroys you. The nations will be burned to ashes like thorn bushes that have been cut down. They will be set on fire. You who are far away, listen to what I have done. You who are close by, recognize my strength. Sinners are afraid in Zion. Panic grips the godless. They say, who among us can coexist with destructive fire? Who among us can coexist with unquenchable fire? The one who lives uprightly and speaks honestly. The one who refuses to profit from oppressive measures and rejects a bribe. The one who does not plot violent crimes and does not seek to harm others. This is the person who will live in a secure place. He will find safety in the rocky mountain strongholds. He will have food and constant supply of water. You will see a king in his splendor. You will see a wide land. Your mind will recall the terror you experienced. And you will ask yourselves, where is the scribe? Where is the one who wastes the money? Where is the one who counts the towers? You will no longer see a defiant people whose language you do not comprehend, whose derisive speech you do not understand. Look at Zion, the city where we hold religious festivals. You will see Jerusalem, a peaceful settlement, a tent that stays put. Its stakes will never be pulled up. None of its ropes will snap in two. Instead, the Lord will rule there as our mighty king. Rivers and wide streams will flow through it. No war galley will enter, no large ships will sail through. For the Lord, our ruler, the Lord, our commander, the Lord, our king, he will deliver us. Though at this time your ropes are slack, the mast is not secured, and the sail is not unfurled, at that time you will divide up a great quantity of loot. Even the lame will drag off plunder. No resident of Zion will say, I am ill. The people who live there will have their sin forgiven. God, there's so many times when I feel like my ropes are slack, as Isaiah puts it, and my mast is not secured. I know that you are always with me, but it is my faith that ebbs and flows. Um, Sometimes I even feel like a hypocrite doing the daily video Bible project. But I do realize that I am human, that I try every day to work on my faith, to work on my relationship. I try and learn from what it is you show me. And sometimes I get it right and other times I just get it wrong. But it is so incredibly reassuring to hear about when Isaiah is talking about a tent that never moves, a tent that always stays put, uh, where you will rule as mighty king and that no war galley will ever enter. I look forward to, as my relationship with you grows, that not that there'll be less and less persecution or frustration or hard times just that I will come to depend upon you more and more and that eventually if I keep my eyes on eternity um, eventually I will arrive at at that wonderful place where there will be no warships there will be no hesitation there'll be no doubt there'll be no uh, anger frustration tears all of that will go away because you will come and you will be our forever ruler, our forever commander, our eternal king. So God, right now, while I am working on our relationship, please help with the ropes that are slack and tighten them up according to your will. For the mass that is not secure, secure it with understanding and prayer And for the sail that's not unfurled, allow me to learn more and more about your word. 
by reading reading your word in the Bible, by talking to other Christians, by going to church and worshiping and praying you, praying to you, that as I work on those things and as I rely more and more on your strength, that our relationship will grow deeper, that maybe those ropes won't be slack as much as they are now, that the mass will be more secure and that that sail will unfurl so that I am on that course of your will in my life. God, I thank you for being my eternal ruler in my heart, for never leaving me even when I get things so incredibly wrong. God, your consistent and endless love baffles me and overwhelms me. I am truly thankful for it. In your son's name I pray. Amen.